and welcome to Holy Week. This is an extremely special time with the uh, liturgical church here, and I hope it's a special time in your lives as well. There's not much more that our God can do for us than what he did during Holy Week, and I hope that during this, uh, this short seven days that we can pay back to him just a little bit of all that he's done for us. Uh, so even if it's not within this building, I hope that every day you'll find some little corner of your day, even if just a few moments, whether it be a formal prayer, an informal prayer, uh, somehow to connect uh, with Jesus, because uh, this is a time, this one Holy Week, when Jesus and God and church should take a priority and not always be knocked down that list as you know it's so easy to happen but, but let's try to make Jesus a priority uh, for this one special Holy Week. So today as you probably know it's Palm Sunday. The palms are right here. Our liturgy is just a little bit different uh, today from what you may be used to. It's taken from the UCC uh, Book of Worship and uh, we will be saying some prayers over the palms and then I'm going to ask any and all of the young kids who'd like to come forward uh, to grab the palms and excitedly share them. And that is supposed to be our, um, our recreation of all the excitement of Jerusalem as Jesus marched proudly into that holy city. And so hopefully those young people can share some of that excitement as they bring you your palms. So the flowers here in the sanctuary, they are offered in memory of six great women uh, who are from this church. And I'm praying I say these names correctly. If I don't, June, you're going to step in and yell from the, the congregation there. Ethel Podemeyer and Joyce Rankin, Nancy Polhemus, uh, Mary Williams, Huddy Bardwell, and Joyce Belton. They all are so missed by all, and those beautiful tulips right there are offered by Bernie and June Lamprin in their memory. So we thank them for the flower donation today. If anyone would like to offer a flower donation, there is a sign-up sheet over there. Also, the uh, Sunday morning chat coffee, which will take place after services this morning, even though we already had a little breakfast. If you'd like to stay for the chat and coffee, um, that will be right through the door in the church hall. And if you'd like to sign up for one, that sign-up sheet is over there. Also, we are trying to use some of the uh, hymns that you choose as your favorites, and if you'd like to put a particular hymn down, that sign-up sheet is there as well. If anyone would like to purchase gift cards or stop and shop in Big Y, Linda is right there in the red blouse, and uh, she can help you with that. Mary McCarthy, sitting right next to her, is accepting donations for the Relay for Life for Hampshire County. Uh, she has the luminarium form, she has the, uh, the duck forms, she has the peanuts, uh, you have the, uh, the tickets for the Blue Bonnet Diner for May 30th, all kinds of stuff going on to raise funds uh, for Mary's Blue College team. And so if you'd like to help uh, fight cancer, Sir, please see her. Also, thank you to everyone who worked at and supported this morning's pancake breakfast. Uh, some of our guys are still sitting in the kitchen there enjoying the, uh, the little break after preparing food for the rest of us. And so uh, they said they'll be joining us a little bit later into the service. We have a deacons meeting tomorrow at 5 p.m. Monday Thursday service begins at 7 p.m. on Thursday, obviously. And this church will be open throughout the day on Good Friday from 9 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. And I'll talk a little bit more about that with the young people in their, uh, our time together. But Good Friday, 9 a.m. is the crucial hours till 3.30 p.m. Uh, please feel free to, to come in. Um, yesterday when I was here, the choir was rehearsing. I went and found the, uh, the great big key to open up that front door so that people can walk in as I'm in here. And boy, that feels like a, was it 1849? When, when was this built? 1849? That feels like an 1849 key. Uh, so the church will be open throughout the day, 9 a.m. and 3.30 on Good Friday. Friday, please take advantage of this beautiful, quiet, holy sanctuary uh, to come in on Good Friday. An Easter, uh, Easter egg hunt will be taking place on Saturday at 10 a.m. If you want to help, uh, Nita is right there in the back. And also, I think she said Tuesday at 7 p.m., we are going to be stuffing those Easter eggs. And that's a community-wide event. Also, I am continuing to visit parishioners at their homes, and if you haven't, uh, if I haven't yet been there, if you'd like me to come by, uh, please uh, do speak to me, and we'll arrange that. And are there any other announcements from the congregation? Not a single. Oh, where, I see a hand. Oh, over here, Mark. Yeah, sunrise service. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have a sunrise service. Um, now, I think I saw. Sunrise is at 6.31, so we gather at about um, 6.10, 6.15, 
and it's going to be at Melody's house right there, and that is over by the American Legion post on Prospect Street. We're going to watch the sun come up over our steeple, um, and uh, I got to have like five alarms go off that morning. I, I'm not a big fan of sunrise any day, but we'll be there. We'll be there. So thank you very much for the invitation. If uh, Jesus can get up, we can get up. So, um, so the prelude for this morning's worship is Coro, and it's from Water Music by G.F. Hanna. <coughs> Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. 
Then they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them that Jesus had said, and they allowed it, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread the leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. God be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to God the Most High. It is right to give God thanks and grace. Let us pray. O God, who in Jesus Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem, heralding a week of pain and of sorrow, be with us now as we follow the way of the cross. In these events of defeat and victory, you have sealed the closeness of death and resurrection, of humiliation and exaltation. We thank you for these branches of palm that promise to become for us symbols of martyrdom and of majesty. Bless them and us that their use this day may announce in our time that Christ has come and that Christ will come again. Amen. Come, Christ Jesus. And at this time, any of our young people want to come forward and, and help with the distribution of the palm? There you go, take those out, share them, okay, pass them around, smile pretty. All right, there you go. Take it, there you go. There you are. There you go. There you are. Thank you. You're all set. I think we've got it now.
do it this time in this holy part of the year. May we as Christian brothers and sisters share with each other the gift of peace.
And he says simply, love one another. That's all it is. That's all we have to do is love one another. So the people laying down the palms, they wanted Jesus to pick up the sword. And Jesus comes in the night before he dies. He says all we have to do is love one another. He doesn't even talk about God. God, he figures, is going to be taken care of. What we have to do is take care of each other. Love one another. That's our new commandment. Then on Good Friday, well, all those people that were thinking he was going to be a violent king. How are you, man? Hi. How you doing? Yeah? So all, those, all of those guys that thought that Jesus was going to be that violent king, they, they took Jesus and they put him on a cross. And that happens at 9 o'clock in the morning, according to one gospel. They, they put Jesus on the cross at 9 o'clock. And then at 12 o'clock, near the brightest part of the day, it just grows dark. And then at 3 o'clock, Jesus dies. So 9 a.m. till 3.30 p.m., this place, this house of God, this house of Jesus, we're going to be open. But even if you can't come here, because if you're at school, or you know you just can't get down to church, Somehow, some way, make Good Friday different. Um, try to do something that's a little bit quieter. Try to do something that's, that's out of your usual kind of Friday activity. Um, don't go out to eat on Good Friday. Don't go to a movie on Good Friday. Don't party on Good Friday. Um, it's not a day for any of that. That's the day that Jesus dies. And that's the day we should treat with a lot of sorrow and somber respect. And when he died, he said that in three days, I will do what? I'm going to come back. I'm going to resurrect. So on Saturday, Holy Saturday, why I hope all of you come back and go for that Easter egg hunt. You're going to go have some, some fun. That's going to be our waiting time. And then next Sunday, at sunrise, we're going to go over to Melody's house. And we're going to watch the sun come over the steeple of this building. And we're going to announce that the tomb is empty. That Jesus isn't dead anymore. And all of those people that wanted the warrior king and put him on the cross. Because they thought he was such a threat that he was going to be the next king. They killed him. Jesus comes back on Easter. And that's the, the greatest, holiest day that we can ever imagine. And so we're going to come back next Sunday. And we're going to celebrate with sunrise just across the field, and we're going to come back here, and we're going to announce the tomb is empty. And if Jesus wasn't in the tomb, you know where he is? Right here. Love one another. Okay? Holy Week. Remember that, especially on Good Friday. Holy Week. All right, guys. Have a good time in Sunday school.
patience in jubilation. Children, are you ready? ready? Here comes the light. Children, here, here comes the light. Here comes the light. Goodbye to darkness. Goodbye to night. In the eastern sky, the stars are shining bright. Oh, here comes the light. Children, here comes the light. Light. Oh, children, here comes the light. sometimes can be just as debilitating as the cancer itself. Also, prayers for Jean Sheehan, who is recovering uh, from surgery down in Florida, is offered by his wife. And also, prayers for Daniel Cruz, 44 years old, a man of Northampton, who was the victim whose body was found just a short distance from our church, just down the road here, uh, back on March 10th. May he rest in peace. Are there any joys, concerns, or celebrations you'd like to share publicly from the congregation? Yes. Um, if everyone could please keep Jeannie Belden in their thoughts and prayers. Um, she has a couple of herniated discs in her back and is going to require surgery, and it's a very painful situation. So please keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. I just wanted to mention that the Heads Up group ended up going to Boston yesterday. I went with them with Max. Oh, you went to Boston? Yeah. yeah Beautiful. There and there was a <laughs> Wonderful. I saw the pictures in my paper as well. Yeah. Wonderful. I saw uh, kids with Smith Academy Athletic Works. I know there were still some here in Northampton, but good for you. How many went to, uh, to Boston? Uh, we went to Toronto, maybe like 40. Something. 40? Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and I think the Gazette, one of the Gazette reporters ended up coming with them meeting us there, so. Wonderful, wonderful. Anything else? Then let us also take just a, a few moments of silence uh, to be with Jesus in the privacy of our own, so uh, in our own souls, uh, to feel what he needs to say to us that we don't want to share, and also what we need to say to him that we don't want to share. each and every one of us. We give him these days, this holy week. We will not forget or take for granted what Jesus has done out of love for every person. The ones who believe in him and the ones who do not, he does not care. He loves us all. He loves his disciples who deserted him. He loves even those who put him to the cross. He loves us one and all, saint and sinner alike. The church will make time for Jesus to come here into our upper room so that we can be with him and share in Holy Communion on Maundy Thursday. We, we will empty our day, hopefully on Good Friday, so that the profound meaning of the cross may have time to sink in and to touch our souls. 
and then we will wait for the news that the women pray that the tomb is found empty. This week tells us again of Jesus' devotion to us, and this is why it is before him that we now bring our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. Hear us, O Lord. Please join me now in reciting the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. What can we give in the name of the one who gave everything for us, and gave it all on the cross? What do we offer in thanksgiving for the steadfast love lived and proclaimed throughout the life of Jesus Christ? We can never, ever repay Jesus for what he willingly endured for all of us. We should do what we can to carry Jesus' work forward so that it does not stop with him on that cross. So in his name, let us make an offering to Christ's church so that we may continue Christ's holy work. Thank mm -hmm. you. not be with you there 2,000 years ago, and I don't know, even know if we would have. It was so hard to believe then. It was still hard to believe today. But Lord, let these gifts help us to help others in your name, so that your message and your work does not stop with you on that cross, but that it continues through each and every one of us. You died to save us, but also to give us an example. Let this be part of our example. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
one of my favorite Palm Sunday hymns, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, Red Hymnal number 175. <laughs> Father. 
Christ according to the Gospel of Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for his burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the entire world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you there. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make our preparations there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl of me. For the Son of Man goes as is written of him, but woe to the one that by whom but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, 
He threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake even one hour? Keep awake and pray. You may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs in order to arrest me as though I were only a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I'll destroy this temple that is made with hands. And in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, Also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I don't know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man that you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times and he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council.
They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him re release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man is God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. They used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, 
Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Thank you, readers. Our sending hymn is found in the blue hymnal, number 192, all glory, laud, and honor. But Jesus on the cross goes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
He doesn't even feel God's presence. There's a separation at that cross so that Jesus faces the reality of human death in ways that I hope we never have to. So the newest Christians, the youngest Christians, like Paul's generation, they speak about Christians falling asleep, but Jesus died. He faces that reality of death so that we don't have to. And even when you think about Joseph of Arimathea coming to take the body and to bury it properly, Joseph was part of the council, and it says that that council unanimously voted to condemn Jesus. All those people in Jerusalem that had come together only on Sunday and then by Friday, on Sunday they're saying, Hosanna to the Son of David, on Friday they're yelling, crucify him. As soon as Jesus doesn't come what they want, they turn against him. Faith is not imagining God to be what we think he is. Faith is us trying to be like God is. And that story is the passion. Jesus didn't come with great power and glory and majesty. He comes only with humility and love. And that's what we are supposed to concentrate on as Christians, and that is what we need to do this week, this Holy Week. Find time. Give time to Jesus. Give time to your faith. Let that kind of well up with inside of you. Don't let this be a normal week. Let this be Holy Week. And please join us on Thursday for Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. Let us come back together and, and celebrate that new commandment. Also, on Good Friday, Come into this beautiful home of Jesus, this place of worship, and spend some time alone with God. I love when that sun hits that window and you can feel the resurrection presence. He is always here, even on Good Friday. We need to remember that he died so that he could live. And then on Easter, sunrise. I know I joke about it, but I'm sure it's going to be a beautiful day watching that sun come over the steeple. And it's going to be beautiful here as we gather again for worship. Let this honestly be holy week. So may we now join together in our benediction response. God has given us light. This is God's doing. Marvelous in our eyes. We will bear the light of Christ to the world. God has offered us the keystone of life. We are called to build lives where God can dwell. We offer Give thanks for God's reign among us. Praise God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Thank you.